Hello students, I am Dr. Sachin Kapoor and the topic of our discussion today is uh, digestion and absorption. See, digestion is a breakdown of complex food into simpler form for easy absorption. The main aim of digesting food is so that it can be broken into a simplified form and it can be absorbed easily through the villi of the intestine. Intestine is the main region where the food is absorbed, small intestine. So, as I have written here, digestion is breakdown of complex food into simpler form for easy absorption. So, you have to remember that what is the aim of digesting the food that is easy absorption. Some animals they show intracellular digestion and some animals show extracellular digestion. When you say intracellular digestion, that means that the food is getting digested in the vacuole, food vacuole inside the cell. The cell engulfs the food and food is getting digested inside the cell as in case of lower animals like protozoans, sponges and even in nidarians. In nidarians like hydra, there is a gastrovascular cavity in which first the food is digested extracellularly and then that semi digested food is absorbed into the individual cells and then it is digested intracellularly. So, intracellular and extracellular what is the difference? When you say intracellular digestion that means the food is getting digested inside the cell by the enzymes as in case of protozoans and sponges. When you say extracellular digestion that means there is a definite cavity or the alimentary canal which is designed for that purpose of digestion. The animal consumes the food, the food goes into the alimentary canal, the lining of the alimentary canal or the associated glands secrete digestive enzymes and the food gets digested. So, that is extracellular digestion, clear? Next, digestion can be mechanical, it can be chemical when you say mechanical digestion that refers to chewing or mastication. You keep the food in your buccal cavity and you start chewing the food with your teeth. The food gets mixed up with saliva and that is what is called bolus. So, what is bolus? Chewed food plus saliva that is bolus. What is the purpose of chewing the food? When you chew the food, the larger food particles are broken into smaller and that increases the surface area for enzyme action. As I have written here, that chewing or the mastication increases surface area which facilitates the enzyme action and swallowing also. If you do not chew your food, you simply swallow the food, then also it will be digested in your stomach and then your intestine. But that will take more time. When you have chewed the food thoroughly, that has increased the surface area and that has facilitated the enzyme action. Moreover, when you swallow the larger food particles, they will cause pain in your esophagus. Chemical digestion refers to action of digestive enzymes on food. So, when you are talking about chemical digestion, you are referring to digestive enzymes. The digestive enzymes are hydrolytic enzymes. There is variety of digestive enzymes, those which act on carbohydrates are called carbohydrases, those which act on proteins are called proteases or peptidases because they break the peptide bonds. Those which act on fats that is triglycerides, they are called esterases or lipases, those which break the nucleic acids, they are called nucleases. Let us see what are the main components of our daily diet when you say diet, when you say food, what all components that includes. Your food includes carbohydrates, if you are taking bread that includes starch, your food includes fats. The main fats of diet are triglycerides. You eat proteins of plant origin or of the animal origin, nucleic acids, they also form a minor component of our daily diet. Other than these four, our diet also includes vitamins, minerals and water. But please remember that vitamins, minerals and water do not require digestion. Why? Because they are already in their simplified form 
and they are absorbed easily. We need to digest those food particles which are complex, which cannot be absorbed easily. Vitamins, minerals and water, they are already in their simplified form. So, they are absorbed easily. These do not require digestion. These do not provide you energy also. They are not the energy giving foods, right. They are required for maintenance of certain metabolic activities. Minerals, vitamins and water, they are not providing you energy. They are required for certain other activities, maintenance of the basic metabolic processes, action of the enzymes, vitamins they form coenzymes also, water is required for the removal of the metabolic wastes in the form of urine or in the form of sweat, water also maintains the constant body heat, right. So, we have seen that what is digestion? the breakdown of complex food into simpler form. Digestion can be intracellular, it can be extracellular. Digestion can be mechanical, it can be chemical. And then we have seen the main components of our daily diet. Now we will see step by step that how the different food components, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, which are called the proximate principles of food. These three are called the protective principles of food. So, how carbohydrates are digested, how do your body digest fats and then proteins. Let us first start with the digestion of carbohydrates. The main carbs of our daily diet include starch, sucrose, lactose. So, I am writing here digestion of carbohydrates and what are the main carbs of our daily diet? Let us write here, main carbs of our daily diet are, you take starch, we take cellulose, we take sucrose that is stable sugar, lactose which is milk sugar. If you are taking germinating seeds that contains the malt sugar, maltose also. Cellulose is an essential component of our daily diet, but we do not have enzymes to digest cellulose. Humans cannot digest cellulose. Though there are bacteria in our large intestine like Streptococcus faecalis and E. coli which digest a negligible amount of cellulose in large intestine, but that is not important from dietary point of view. Why we require cellulose in our diet is that it acts as roughage, it adds bulk to the food, you feel satisfied that your stomach is full, you have eaten something. Cellulose fibers, they irritate the intestinal lining that promotes the secretion of mucus and facilitates intestinal movements. In addition to this, cellulose fibers, they hold water and prevent constipation. So, cellulose is an important component of our daily diet, but we cannot digest cellulose. Herbivorous animals like ruminants, they can digest cellulose because their stomach Rumen and reticulum chambers have symbiotic microorganisms like protozoans and bacteria, bacteria rumenococcus. These produce the cellulose digesting enzymes, right? That we'll discuss as a separate topic: digestion of cellulose in ruminants. Now let's come back. We are talking about the main carbs of our daily diet. Let's start with the buccal cavity. In your buccal cavity there is saliva produced by salivary glands. Saliva contains the enzyme salivary amylase or tylen. That enzyme breaks starch into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. The enzyme is salivary amylase or tylen. It requires a pH of 6 to 7.4 and the optimum pH, the pH at which it shows best activity is 6.8. So, when you start chewing the food, if your food has cooked starch, 
Please remember it can digest only cooked starch, it cannot digest uncooked starch. So, that cooked starch is converted into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins by the enzyme salivary amylase. Maltose and isomaltose are simple sugars. That is the reason that when you chew bread for some time, it starts tasting sweet because of the formation of simple sugars. Limit dextrins are the intermediate stages which are formed during partial digestion of starch. Because the food is chewed for short duration, so only 3 to 5 percent of starch is digested in your buccal cavity. Then we swallow the food, that chewed food along with the saliva is bolus. The bolus passes through the esophagus. Esophagus does not secrete any digestive enzyme. It is just a passage for passing food to your stomach. So, in buccal cavity what has happened? Starch digestion starts. It is the beginning of the starch digestion. As I told you esophagus does not secrete any digestive enzyme, it is only a passage, but the starch digestion continues in the esophagus. Why? Because the salivary amylase will continue doing its activity. Next is stomach. When the food reaches the stomach, the pH is acidic. Why? Because stomach has hydrochloric acid. So, because of HCl, pH is acidic because of HCL. Acidic pH inhibits the activity of tylen, but by the time entire bolus becomes acidic, more amount of starch that is nearly 30 to 50 percent is digested by the action of salivary amylase. In the stomach, the bolus of the food gets mixed up with the acidic content. So, bolus plus acidic contents of stomach is what is called chyme. Is that clear? After stomach, the chyme enters into the small intestine. Small intestine receives three digestive juices, three important digestive juices which are there in the small intestine are, so we are writing here about the digestion of carbohydrates in small intestine. As I said small intestine receives three digestive juices. One is bile juice. Bile juice is produced by liver and it is stored in gall bladder. Gall bladder stores and concentrates bile juice up to 20 times by absorbing water. Bile juice does not contain any digestive enzyme. Bile juice has bile salts, sodium torocolate, sodium glycocolate which helps in the emulsification of fats that we will discuss separately in the digestion of fats. Second juice in the small intestine is pancreatic juice. It is the richest digestive juice because it has variety of enzymes for digesting proteins, carbohydrates, fats, nucleic acids. Pancreatic juice contains the enzyme pancreatic amylase. Pancreatic amylase which is also called amylopsin, it breaks starch, the remaining starch into again maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. This M is for maltose, maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. The third juice which is there in the small intestine is the intestinal juice. Intestinal juice has variety of enzymes. Intestinal juice has intestinal amylase which will digest the remaining starch into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. So, I am writing for intestinal juice. Intestinal juice has intestinal amylase which is again going to digest starch into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. 
then it also has maltase enzyme maltase will break maltose sugar into glucose and glucose that is two units of glucose similarly isomaltase enzyme will break isomaltose into glucose and glucose lactase enzyme which is present in the intestinal juice of mammals lactase acts on the milk sugar lactose and breaks it into glucose plus galactose the sucrase enzyme breaks sucrose which is the table sugar or commercial sugar or cane sugar the sucrose is broken into glucose plus fructose right so in the small intestine the digestion of carbohydrates is completed carb digestion starts in the buccal cavity but is completed in the small intestine now let's see what are the end products of the carbohydrate digestion whatever carb you eat finally you get what glucose fructose galactose these three so you can say that the end products of carbohydrate digestion are glucose fructose galactose these three are simple monosaccharide units saccharide means sugar these three are simple monosaccharide units which are absorbed easily through the villi of the intestine so what was the main aim of digestion breakdown of the complex food into simpler form for easy absorption so we have seen that the digestion of carbohydrates begins in the buccal cavity and it ends in the small intestine which enzyme is there in the buccal cavity which starts the starch digestion it is salivary amylase or that is also called tyrolene and it is also called diastase please remember salivary amylase is also called tyrolin or diastase it begins starch digestion then the bolus is swallowed it goes to the stomach the ph is acidic acidic ph inhibits the activity of tyrolin but by the time entire bolus becomes acidic 30 to 50% starch is digested and then the remaining gets digested by the pancreatic amylase which is a stronger enzyme it can digest cooked as well as uncooked starch and it has a pH range of 4 to 11 pancreatic amylase right salivary amylase has a pH range of 6 to 7.4 pancreatic juice has pancreatic amylase bile juice does not contain any digestive enzyme intestinal juice has these enzymes maltase isomaltase lactase sucrase intestinal amylase so with that we end up with this session thank you